Hey, it's me Max, aka Rose and Twig, and welcome back to the channel. I know it has been <laughs> quite a while, uh, I hope you have been doing well. Today I want to talk a little bit about my favorite sample piano library, which is the Golden Age Grand by Teldotone Audio. Uh, this video is not sponsored in any way, I just really wanted to showcase this really cool piano. I use this piano on pretty much all my projects, from my personal releases with Rosentrick to my composing work. The Golden Age Grand has pretty much everything you would expect from a typical piano library, but it's unique sample sets and awesome custom presets, which perfectly fit the styles of music I work in, are the reason I love it so much. Golden Age Grand features three unique sample sets. High Fidelity pre-1975, which has a very beautiful and rich sounding piano, warmth through vintage pre's and consoles, and is pretty much great for all kinds of productions. To tape, 2 inch analog tape slowed down. Super smooth and warm sound, uh, sounds really really lovely, it's really great for lo-fi and film scores, game scores, ambient music. Too digital. Digitally time stretched and pitch shifted down a minor third. A very interesting character, which is almost reverb like in a way. There's also this mystical nostalgia button which works with any sample set. The website doesn't really explain what this does since it's meant to be kind of like a magic button of sorts. It definitely smooths out the samples even more and creates a more vintage and darker sound. The presets for this are also really cool. Uh, I think they feature treatments and sounds that are not part of the normal default sample set. So there are some really interesting, unique sounds in here. Um, I'm gonna show you a few of my favorite ones and point out some more interesting features from the library. So there are multiple sets of preset folders. We have the headphones folder, the performance recordings and scores. Obviously you can use pretty much all of these for whatever you like but um, these are just kind of like some guidelines. For, for example, I think the headphones ones were like oriented more towards um, lo-fi, R&B, hip-hop production, whatever, but there are some really cool sounds in here. Um, same with uh, scores, obviously this is more meant for scoring, but you obviously I used a ton of these in my latest album too. To be fair, my album is pretty soundtrack heavy, but yeah. Um, the other ones are also really cool. I especially like the recordings tab, but the performance one is really funny too. So let's just load up. So for example, the 1968 TV concert on VHS. Very specific, very cool. Has some nice tape wobble. There are also some older things like the Carnegie Hall 1951 which is much more mono in its signal. You know, uh, you can really explore those. Uh, I think another really cool one was the Moskovsky concert 1976. Oh yeah, I really like this one. Especially if we now play around with like some of these settings. Uh, so for example, one of my favorite things to do is put these into full mono, which really makes it sound like it's like really old or like some old recording i use that technique a ton uh, so we like make the sound the piano mono but then you know you can pan it around in the stereo field do whatever you like with it uh, it's really cool there's this h knob which uh, alters the sample in a way which is really interesting so this is without the h knob really old, unstable and, you know, apply some filtering, which is really cool. So I think I like it around here. So we still have some low end, a bit less reverb, saturation. We can also introduce a really nice noise floor, which can help make it sound even more like an actual recording.
Yeah, exactly. It has a lot of like flutter, chorusy type of situation. Which sounds cool. There's also one that's called Hyperlight. I don't know if this is just named after whatever Hyperlight is, but my first association, obviously, since I'm a big uh, Rich Vreeland uh, Disaster Piece fan, is um, Hyperlight Drifter, which is not what I played, but <laughs> I don't really remember how to play that. It's been a while. But it sounds cool, it almost has like this kind of sample echo sound. Um, I think I remember to play something from Thess, uh, a different game. So it's another game he worked on. Let's see. preset as well. What I really like about this is that this doesn't just sound like you took a normal piano and just, you know, put on some wow and flutter and that's it. It really has a interesting, unique character to it. Uh, the recordings one is actually one of my favorite ones. Uh, I think this is modeled after different types of records starting from like the 50s up to modern day. Um, there are some really nice sounds in here. I think uh, I used felt heavy quite a lot. This is I think one of the only sample sets that has felt in it. this piano is really really cool you can do all kinds of things with it um, let's quickly check out some of the uh, headphone ones <laughs> I know did you try restarting is actually really cool I want to use that for something for quite a while I think for like a horror score or something this would be really awesome <laughs> like it sounds like the sample you know it pans around and like it kind of cuts out in between, which is really cool. I made this little neoclassical ambient-esque piece and uh, I just used the uh, one of the presets, uh, adjusted it a little bit, added some delay, some reverb, some further processing, and yeah, this is what I came up with. Uh, the full version of it will be available on my Bandcamp and SoundCloud. Um, if you would really would like to see it on Spotify as well, let me know.
the way I did this was I uh, used this preset called the Hourglass. I adjusted some of the settings. I um, took out the ribbon mic, added a little bit more room. Um, I took out the wow. First of all, I had it on the postcard setting, which is probably my favorite wow setting uh, of the plugin, but it, um, it was a little bit too much. I really liked how the piano just sounded like this. Um, made it all mono, of course. Uh, again, added some sounds, uh, a delay, some reverb, additional uh, tape processing. And um, what I did is I played this in. So let's see. These are the chords I played. Uh, I played them a little bit higher than I wanted the actual piece to end up in. Uh, then I just bounced that out and slowed it down a little bit, which gave me this. Yeah, as you can see, uh, instantly inspiring this thing. If you want to get it, uh, there's a link in the description. No affiliate link or whatever, you know, just you can check out their products. Uh, I really like a lot of their products, actually. Um, there's another one which I really like to use, which is called uh, Scabo, which is kind of, it's interesting. Like if you if you like Tom York, you probably want to get this, <laughs> uh, this library. Uh, it's, it's really cool. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll I'll do a review showcase of more of their products. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I surely did. I hope we'll see each other very soon.